and welcome back to another episode of Our Town. We're here in studio today at the Mohawk Television uh, Studios, if you will. And um, there's always lots happening here in Kahnawake in terms of news. So uh, Lance and I, once again, are joining you today to bring you all the news and hopefully up to date on what's happening in and around our community. Well, busy stuff first of all, Regan. Uh, the Kahnawake Youth Center has put together this wonderful program where they're grabbing toys for the community. I think that's yeah, great. Yeah, I heard they were at the service complex and they were collecting toys within a certain uh, time frame, if you will. But yeah. I know the organizations and also the local schools and, um, you know, the bank and things like that have also been doing the same to help the food basket or the Gahnawage Christmas basket fund. So it's a great time of year in terms of uh, the community really coming together mm -hmm. and, you know, pitching in of course, to uh, lend a helping hand to some of the less fortunate families in Ganawage. And also, even, and, and when I say less fortunate, I don't mean poor. I just mean that not everybody can afford to buy huge amount of gifts or toys for their family. You know, that's true, Regan. And not I every, mean, yeah. You know, you know, everyone has uh, sometimes hard times. You never know. Sometimes mm -hmm. it... Uh, a job that was, you know, very prominent for them during the course of the year. All of a sudden, the job is finished, and I mean, there's always, always circumstances. And it's good that the Gunawagi Food Bank, uh, and especially Orville, has pulled together this wonderful program. Mm -hmm. I, my hand goes out to Orville every single year because he volunteers to do this. Yeah, of yeah. of course, and and he does it all year, all year round. That's right. Uh, the other thing too is um, there's a number of. Uh, Operation Red Nose, um, I don't know if that's what you call it, but I know every year there are a number of services that are offered in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, designated driver yeah, might yeah, that's be designated uh, driver. the term now. Um, I, usually it's through community mm -hmm. services. I believe that it's still being offered once again because I did yeah. see a call for drivers and there was an incentive to win a prize or a, something. A really good were, incentive, yeah. as a matter of fact, where yeah. you, uh, all the people who are signing up to be a designated driver Again, in a grand prize at the end of the uh, the season. I the believe season. it's January 4th or 6th. It's around that time. Yeah. Just around when the holiday parties are finished. Uh, I was a designated driver at one point. Were you? Uh, yeah. For, uh, <laughs> uh, many times. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a style choice. It's a choice I, I've made yeah, of course. for myself. Um, and it's a good thing. I mean... You, Kind of like uh, are a little bit of the life of the party because you know you have the camera and you're taking pictures of everybody, but yeah. you know, just, but no, it's and it's I'm a sure the thing. ride home could be interesting. It certainly <laughs> is for sure. But uh, my hat goes off to uh, KSCS. We're um, putting that out there. Yeah, and of course, you know, we want all community members oh. to be safe this time of year. If you're out uh, celebrating and being jolly or being merry uh, during the Christmas holidays, of course, you know, don't drink and drive. It's always been. Uh, a motto here and um, there are local taxi cabs or even the designated driver program that can get you home safe and sound. You know, speaking of the holidays, everybody's trying to get all their holiday shopping together. How going. are you doing? Well, <laughs> so far as, as present day, thank God for Santa Claus for <laughs> him kind of pitching in and doing his thing. Otherwise, I am a slow shopper. I am one of those people that love to be there December 24th at 4.30 in the afternoon, mm -hmm. let's go. Yeah. That's the kind of guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think, that, I don't know. That, I, that and I'm not trying to, you know, have a battle of the sexes here. But uh, I know, you know, women can be just as last minute. But it does seem to me that it, it seems to be a man thing for y'all to be heading out to the mall on Christmas Eve and trying to get weeks of shopping done into, like, a small time frame you know and then it just it just seems you know i have brothers and my fiance and i'm just like did you do any of your shopping no you know i'm gonna wait till i can agree christmas eve so I it's like agree. wow yeah. i'm i'm done you're done i'm done for everybody my stuff has been wrapped for two weeks that's crazy yeah everything who does my that kids, I mean, everything. that's crazy I mean, it's all it's all you know, in another the other room, hidden my away, goodness. and it's done right down to the bow and name tags. My God. Yeah. So for me, I, I love it. I, I love the, the mania of it. I love the craziness of it. But I have my, <laughs> my I have my list. I know exactly what I'm going to get. Yeah. So I don't have to worry about, you know, stressing over, over weeks to weeks when we're going to get. Um, 
And I'm a pretty... Well, usually I'm like that too. I think the last couple of years I've actually, you know, wrapped until the wee hours of the morning and, and you know, it's it's tiring the next day. The kids are up early. So I just no, figured I like that. if I have a few days here and there that I can steal away a couple of hours and get things done while they're in school, then I'm going to take advantage of that. So, um, so yeah, I'm done. And I'm pretty happy about it. I don't know how you do it, Regan. Anyways, we are going to be having a Christmas special here on Mohawk TV. Yes. Um, I just wanted to know, do you remember the uh, version of Scrooge that Mohawk TV did a few years ago? I do remember that. <laughs> With me <laughs> playing Scrooge and all of the staff uh, that worked here at the time, including uh, Gariwa Gatsude's grandmother, uh, Annie, dear. Yeah. The who thing... played one of the ghosts, which I thought was really oh, fabulous. It was good. It was I was good. pregnant at the time, nobody knew. But when I see myself on camera, it's just really funny. And I was thinking about, you know, re airing that over the holiday season. Yeah, just do just that. for kicks, you know. We have a yeah. young uh um Jacobs. That's right. Gawar Naharde? Gawar Naharde. Yeah. Uh, Jacobs, uh, you know, starring in it. So, so that would be cool. <laughs> she was going places then. That's right. As long as you air that one and not the Route, what was it called? <laughs> I-89. I-89. <laughs> that let's, was like your star. <laughs> let's, let's put that to rest. <laughs> it will go on forever in the Mohawk TV if archives. You could just, there, I, have, I have to tell you, and, and, and I want to go back to that, because you did air it during, during Halloween. I did. Well, it's a Halloween. It's a Halloween theme. Yeah. That, that in, 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 as far as I'm concerned, was a lot of fun, I have to admit. <laughs> but when I was watching it, the, the best part about that whole thing was is that my acting was so like, come on, Lance, you can do it. I'm like, oh, I don't know how to act. I had so fun. are you saying are you saying it was bad? <laughs> well, you know what? Everyone was fantastic on that shoot. <laughs> okay. Uh, Anyways, okay, so we will be having our Christmas show again uh, next week. It's going to be uh, we're going to be doing some fun stuff. We won't let anything out of the bag just yet. Mm -hmm. But for now, let's get on to a few more serious things that are happening locally yes. in the news. Um, just quickly, I know along with the food bank and all the food drives and toy drives, I know every year Gari Winordo uh, holds a grocery bingo annually, so I, I know that uh, that was pretty packed this week. Yeah. Um, and so uh, keep on the lookout for all of your local events that surround this type of drive or right. uh, you know give generously. It's uh, the time of the year to do so. Mm -hmm. um, making headlines. In huge international news was the passing of Nelson Mandela. That's correct. And I mean, it's not something that you can't get from mainstream media, but the reason why we're bringing it up here on Mohawk TV is because we did have a native leader that went down there That's correct. to represent all of Turtle Island. Uh, Sean Atlio, who's the uh, chief of the Assembly of First Nations, uh, was one of the invited guests uh, to be part of the funeral. And he actually put an eagle feather um, with... The, with uh, Mr. Mandela's mm -hmm. uh, remains, it was it was kind of uh, interesting when I first heard about that because you know you don't think that uh, Sean Atlio or any person of uh, native descent would be invited just because mm -hmm. of this you know maybe it's because you think that maybe there's no association there but it's certainly uh, he touched on all different people uh, mm -hmm. uh, Nelson Mandela. I, you know, I think that there's a lot of um, great Native activists in Turtle Island that, you know, make a certain amount of headway internationally speaking. And even though they may not be at the same level as the amount of press coverage that goes to, you know, Stephen Harper or the President of the United States, if you will, I do think that there are definitely some Native leaders that deserve that credit mm -hmm. and also that should be invited to something like this because there is you know a representation that deserves to be there Absolutely. there are a lot of political leaders that are that are native that do a lot for this country and you know within the confederacy so of course i would think personally that it's only right that you know we have some representation at such a huge event i would have loved to have been a fly on the wall on that plane what i thought was interesting you had <laughs> uh you had sean atlio on the plane with uh kim campbell former prime minister who was there brian mulroney mm -hmm. uh, jean chrétien stephen harper mm -hmm. uh 
Jesus, who else was on the plane during that time? Well, anyway, can you imagine just being on the plane and hearing what kind of conversations that they had? Yeah, what do you phone? think went on? What do you, in your mind, give me something, give me a line of like in terms of like what you think the conversation would be like. Well, I think yeah, I, I think just some of the uh, the niceties were, were, were put in place. You know, hi, how are you? Good to see you. How's things? How's tricks? You know, how's, how's the government? But, you know, if they were smart about things, they had to make things, you know, as, as, as nice and as quiet as yeah. possible. I wonder if there was those, any of those, you know, handshakes that were just like, <sighs> you know? Yeah, this is just fake, Regan. <sighs> <sighs> Thanks. On that note, can we take a break? I'm, watch, I'm watching you. Uh, Those kind of handshakes. Yeah. Anyways, um, things that are also happening in local news, just really quickly, uh, the turf at the arena is not going back in next year, and I know there was a little bit of controversy surrounding why and things like that, but the you know there was a release put out by the Mohawk Council last week saying that you know, it was very nice of the owner to bring the turf to the arena and try it out for a season. Mm -hmm. um, there was some mixed reviews as to whether people liked it or not or enjoyed playing on it or not. Right. But the overall reason is that the arena has to be accessible by various people who run various sports. So you have ball hockey, uh, roller derby, and also anyone who wants to be able to rent for concerts or things like that. Right. And, uh, you know... So the turf is very expensive, and obviously you can't have people just walking all over it and things like that. Right. So I think at the end of the day, it just didn't suit the arena. It Maybe just wasn't if we conducive. Can, yeah. You know, but it kind of proves to the community that we really do need uh, a second turf area. Well, sure, the, definitely <laughs> a second it's a site, if you will. I, I think yeah. that's what always been the discussion over these past couple of years is that, you know, we need a, an arena that's dedicated definitely for hockey mm -hmm. all year round. We have yeah. another arena that's dedicated to lacrosse. Lacrosse, yeah. We have a place dedicated to concerts and theater. And, I mean, there's yeah. a whole slew of things that I wish that we all could do, you know. With well, I know that Lynn Norton and another um, few other people had brought up, you know, that idea and also creating some sort of fundraising at, you know, or vision to make that happen. And I think that there's a number of community members who are obviously on board with that. I think it's a great idea. And I mm -hmm. think if we can dream it, we can build it, you yeah. know, and we can put our minds to something great and, and get that done for this community. A um, few other things that I thought were interesting, um, aside from, you know, the everyday news, I know FNEA is making a lot of headlines in our community across the country. People are, you know, very outspoken about the First Nations Education Act. Here at Mohawk TV, we're going, we're not going to be discussing it on the show today because it's just too profound for an entire show mm -hmm. will be dedicated uh, through the Gatnawage Education Center. They are, we will be airing a program next week, I believe uh, December, uh, either Wednesday or Thursday. Um, it could be the 19th. Anyways, um, just dedicating uh, a panel to discuss the FNEA and the possible implications and what Gatnawage and the rest of First Nations communities across the country should be doing to get involved and help stop this type of legislation from going through Right. because uh, it's going to affect everybody. So stay on the lookout for that. And uh, you can also uh, follow us on Facebook. Just uh, press uh, put in uh, Gahnawage Mohawk TV and all the latest news will come up. Um, aside from that, one of the things that I found really interesting was there's a lawsuit um, that was filed by several community members, a class action lawsuit, not filed by several community members, excuse me, that involved several community members with the Great Escape Lodge in um, Lake George. Lake George. Yes, yeah. and from what I understand, um, five years ago there was something in the water that had made everybody sick. And it was like, you know, people were staying there and days later they came down with some kind of sickness and... Um, so what I found out was that it's it's a class action uh, lawsuit that was filed involving uh, people from everywhere that were at the Great Escape at that, that time, time during, during, that during that time, and it involves some community members, and either they you know they were part of the lawsuit or they they received free nights and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I, it's just really interesting because you know there's a lot of people that go to the Great Escape. And a lot of people George. go. The thing is, is you have to remember in the United States. I mean, you know, that's one of the things that you do. You sue. Yeah. For, for any reason. But I mean, mind if you. If you though, fell off a bus today and rolled into the street, call Sullivan and Sons. On, all you know. all, all, all yeah. plausible, and what happens in the States is that you sue. But 
Uh, the good thing is, is I'm so glad to hear that at least there's some sort of um, uh, change. Like retribution. Yeah, yeah retribution. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's going to be happening with uh, community members here. Okay. So that's good news. It's a, there's a lot going on, but uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. In the headlines this week, making a lot of stir, if you will, in the community, is the Mohawk Council's uh, recent release on the their concerns over a local head shop. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people talking about it via social network. We did get the opportunity to sit down with Chief Carl Horn from the Mohawk Council of Gatnawage. Right. So without giving any opinion away or anything like that, we're just going to go to a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to have more with that interview. So stay tuned. Brought to you by Get and Go, a proud sponsor of Mohawk TV programming. And welcome back to our town. We're in studio right now with Chief Carl Horn from the Mohawk Council of Gahnawage. And a story that's been developing over the last several days is a new business here in Gahnawage that promotes. Um, the selling, if you will, of paraphernalia, drug paraphernalia. Now, um, in the last couple of days, we've been seeing a lot of debate about this store and, and the issue on social network. Um, and recently now, the Mohawk Council of Gahnawage put out a statement today, here Wednesday, uh, December 11th, um, and talking about the um, fact that they are disappointed that a store like this would pop up in the community. Could you um, perhaps yeah, uh, first of all, clarify? To, to, yeah, to clarify, or to, I don't know what, what, what type of debate there should be. Uh, mm -hmm. Something like this is uh, not going to be tolerated. Mm -hmm. uh, it's disturbing. And um, everybody knows my position on, on something like this. And mm -hmm. I, I had to go see it for my eyes, for myself. And uh, I was a police officer 12 years. I've seen a lot of stuff in uh, my career as a police officer and, mm -hmm. and to walk into um, a local business in the territory of Gunawaga and to see something like that is um, uh, it's frustrating, disturbing and uh, and I'm sure there's other community members out there that feel the same way as I do. It's just um, we're, we're trying to promote, especially amongst our youth, uh, healthy lifestyles mm -hmm. and to uh, open a business and promote the sale uh, of drug paraphernalia is just um, um, where we headed as a community. And you know, it gets it gets me frustrated and emotional emotional here now just to to think about it. Um, and I'm hoping uh, for sure the council is not going to stand for it. Um, and I'm hoping crew members out there uh, feel the same way as I do. Mm -hmm. And well, there has been a lot of debate, and I know that you are very um, strong in your position in terms of having zero tolerance in the community, and that relates to this type of issue also. Mm -hmm. um, but what I meant about debates on Facebook is that there are some people who feel that this type of business is non-threatening and that you know it's free enterprise in Gahnawage, that there are no laws that prohibit the sale of paraphernalia, the use of tobacco or hemp products, things like that. So that's what I meant about mm -hmm. uh, debate going on. And also, you know, you have a strong no side, of course, coming out saying, no, we are a zero tolerance community. You know, let's close this place down, even talking as far as going there and holding a protest, you know, saying that we're not going to accept this kind of issue here in the community. Now, one of the things that the Moa Council had talked about um, in the release is that their, uh, this business was so close to Gunawage Survival School. Um, you know, the fact is, is that here in the community, there's no zoning laws per se. And then we also don't have a policy in place that you know, seems or would deem a business beneficial to the community or not. Do you think that this could be part of the problem? Well, this is, uh, this is bigger than that, to be quite honest with you. And I couldn't care if the store was located in the bush somewhere. Uh, mm -hmm. The fact remains, uh, it's a store that's promoting the use of drugs. Um, and regardless uh, of its location, it's not going to be tolerated. And 
maybe that's something for the community to consider down the road mm -hmm. uh, when opening a business, uh, you know, to consider all the factors such as uh, health and safety mm -hmm. uh, and what type of business that they're going to open. Mm -hmm. uh, and I agree that there's free enterprise, uh, especially on private property. Uh, if somebody wants to open a business, wherever it is, and that's that's their right. And, and I'm not here to infringe on anybody's rights, but I'm just giving my opinion, and I'm sure other community members uh, share that opinion as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe that's something for the community to consider down the road. But uh, when opening a business, um, there's got to be some common sense used. Um, I know it, there's nothing illegal what they're selling, mm -hmm. but morally, there's uh, an issue. And um, the peacekeepers, are, our hands are tied, like I said before, uh, what they're selling is not illegal. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, you said yourself that you, you know, you had to see it with your own eyes yeah. that, you know, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, you wouldn't have come across this type of business. Do you feel that, you know, being a police officer for all those years and now sitting on council as a chief for the last two terms, do you think that um, this is becoming more common in the community and more acceptable? And is that dangerous ground that we're, we're all treading on as a community? Well, well I've been preaching it since the, the, the first year I got in council. The, the, the drug issue is, is headed to, towards um, um, unprecedented waters in regards to, especially amongst our youth. Mm -hmm. And who would ever have thought 10, 15 years ago uh, somebody would even consider opening a store like this. Mm -hmm. Now it's almost becoming the norm, and and that's troubling. Mm -hmm. It's it's serious now. And um, when I when I was first made aware of it, uh, I thought it was a hoax. I thought it was a joke. Uh, I had to personally go there myself and and see it, and it was pretty disturbing for me anyway, mm -hmm. and maybe not for other people's. And and, and I want to make it clear. Uh, uh, in regards to the drug issue, I mean, uh, it's a serious issue in our community. Mm -hmm. But my main focus and goal is to educate our youth, our younger generation. Right. If you're over 18, you're an adult, you're a grown man or woman. Uh, if that's the choice to you, you know, choices you want to do, you you want to you want to um, take drugs, that's your business. But I'm trying to um, make sure the 12 and 13 year olds out there um, are educated and understand that. Um, as a community, we don't tolerate it. That's why I'm pushing hard for zero tolerance. Mm -hmm. And um, if I can just reach out to one child out there, 12, 13, 14 year olds to, to stay away from it, then I can say that I did my job and that's what I'm trying to do because um, uh, you, you start off with marijuana, then it, um, everybody's saying it's, it's, uh, it's not that bad of a drug. Mm -hmm. The fact remains it's, it's something that alters your mind and your judgment. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that community services and other specialists in the field that deal with the drug issue um, or even alcohol would say that, uh, you know, that marijuana is a gateway drug, that it leads to other things and that parents and even the community at large should be concerned about, you know, the uh, maybe laid back or laissez-faire attitude towards uh, marijuana. You know, I agree. And like I said, in my experience as a police officer, I've seen you know, a, a lot of stuff over the years and, and you see 12, 13, 14 year olds uh, uh, in possession of marijuana or mm -hmm. under the influence of marijuana. And uh, when parents come come to the police station and they see their, their, their child 13, 14 and, and in, in tears, and then you find out uh, five, six, seven years down the road, it, it led to something else yeah. where it, 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 they make decisions uh, where their lives are ruined. and. Uh, like I said before uh, earlier, um, if you're an adult, if if those that's the choices you want to make, you know that you 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 live with them. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm trying to reach out to those, um, you know, the younger generation, our future generations that are 12 and 13, right. and and something like this, uh, this type of um, advertising of drug uh, paraphernalia is just um, it's wrong. And you said it was a bad example. That you felt that it was just a poor example of of you know, the moral, maybe, yeah. character, yeah, you know, it, fabric it, of the community. That's why it, it's it's frustrating and puzzling that it's almost, like I said before, it's almost become the norm. Mm -hmm. It's almost become that, you know what, it, it's so um, uh, accepted and, and, and um, rampant in our community. Mm -hmm. Let's let's open a store to promote it more. Right. Which is uh, disturbing and, 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 and frustrating. Right. 
Of course, you know, you're not the only one that feels that way. There is a number of communities who have, community members, excuse me, who have come out publicly with that same position. Now, from what I understand, the Moat Council of Kahnawake is drafting a letter to said owners. Can you give me more details yeah, about that? Uh, today we, re we issued a press release, obviously right. Wednesday, December, whatever uh, today 11th, is. 11th, I believe. Uh, like I said, just a brief update. Yesterday, uh, <laughs> yesterday was brought to my attention at mm -hmm. my residence. I was given a call and, and sent an email, mm -hmm. uh, and that was relayed to the council table. Uh, and this with, person was for making reference to to the flyer the that's made and, and, yeah. and, and the grand opening that's supposed to happening. Uh, and they uh, felt that it was uh, disturbing and mm -hmm. concerning. So okay. they had sent me that information. That information was relayed to the council table, and we decided that. Uh, this shouldn't be tolerated. Uh, Don, had, did everybody feel that way on yep. the council? Yeah, okay. pretty much, yeah. I mean, I didn't speak to everybody personally, but... Um, As a table, though, it was yeah. discussed? N nobody okay. nobody um, uh, disputed the fact that it's, it's, it's um, mm -hmm. disturbing and concerning to, to our community. Right. So we decided that um, uh, a letter should be drafted and I was going to hand deliver it. Uh, I went personally to the, to, the, to the location yesterday, like I said, to, to view it for myself. And uh, advi I advised the individuals that were in there, the owner, as well as who's, who's managing uh, the store, which is another thing which I find even more disturbing that it, um, there was a non-local woman in there, uh, as well as her, her, her father, um, working in the store. And uh, that's a story for another time, which, mm -hmm. is, which, which, is, which is a double whammy to me. Mm -hmm. um, that I'm arguing with somebody that's not even from this community uh, mm -hmm. about uh, the concerning stuff that they're trying to sell. But, you know, like I said, I advised the, the, the owner that a letter was being drafted by, by the, the council and it's going to be hand delivered uh, to yourself and uh, I'll deliver it myself if I have to. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand that, you know, um, without getting into uh, great detail that you were, uh, you know, that you did have the opportunity to speak to the owner and share your concerns. And what was the reaction from that business person? No, I, um, he, he was, um, how can I say, um, Concerned as well, mm -hmm. but he had the same argument, um, such as it's free enterprise. Uh, it's it's we're not doing nothing illegal. Um, we had he sort of um, anticipated this type of reaction, mm -hmm. especially uh, when the flyers were made public and, and ended up on Facebook, obviously. Mm -hmm. And he was sort of prepared that uh, it was going to come to this. Right. Um, it was, it was explained to him that, I'm um, not only there as a, as a member of council, but as a member of the community that I understand that you're doing nothing illegal, but it's morally wrong. Um, uh, what's being, uh, done here. Mm -hmm. I did have the opportunity to, to also stop in at the business, uh, this week and take a look for myself, what uh, people were discussing. And I spoke to one of the workers there who shared that, uh, common, um, I guess, idea, if you will, in terms of that they're not doing anything wrong and what people choose to do, you know, in their privacy of their own homes or once they leave the store is completely up to them that, you know, it's 18 years and over mm -hmm. and ID is required. Um, and that, you know, basically they said, we're not, uh, you know, we're not promoting anything or we're not not promoting anything. We're just basically selling tobacco-based products and also what people do when they leave is not our concern. And yeah, which okay. I, don't, I don't agree with. I mm -hmm. mean, um, just look at the flyer and look at some of the, the, the t-shirts that are hanging in, in the store. And yes, a it, joint it, it, a day will keep the doctor away was, I mean, a, was a flag in the store. What, I mean, what type yeah. of message is that sending? Yeah. And mm -hmm. I hope it just doesn't give the black eye to, uh, you know, the, the tobacco industry being that, um, um, it's it, one of these stores is located in, in a, a smoke shop, a tobacco shop, yeah. which is uh, frustrating, especially at the time where, we, you know, the council and the tobacco industry has finally made some sort of, I'm not going to say uh, um, connection, but mm -hmm. there's a dialogue there where we're moving towards trying to regulate the industry. And I just hope this doesn't set it back uh, yeah. two, three steps, because um, like I said, there was some dialogue that was made between the tobacco industry and um in the tobacco say, community, if you will. Yeah, and, and you know full well I 100% support the, the tobacco industry and whoever yeah. is involved with it. And um, it's just my opinion to walk into a tobacco smoke shop and six feet to your left there's tobacco products and six feet to your right there's drug paraphernalia. 
Yeah. Uh, I have an issue with that. And it and it's not like it's a, a small section, right? Like when I uh, went into the store, it was a great deal, uh, a great amount that's offered different things, different products. Um, you know, surrounding uh, and into, I, I would say it was a little less than half, but you know, one part of the soil, you are correct that it's, and it, and it does promote the use of yeah. hemp products and yeah. things like that. So any other suggestion I think would be, you know, yeah, I, mean, um, uh, I, I wasn't born yesterday. Crazy to, yeah, it's try not, and imply. Those, those devices are not used for tobacco related products. Exactly. It's clearly used for uh, marijuana and cannabis, uh, mm -hmm. which is illegal. I mean, some people might, but I do not yeah, believe yeah. that is the mission that, you know, just looking at the flyer also is, you know, the goal of the store is to promote that. So, and from, I'll just one other yeah. thing on that. I mean, to my understanding, there, there, and I know for a fact that there's a store like this in Chattagee, mm -hmm. my message is to the owners, to uh, whoever's involved with it, shut it down. And if anybody wants to go buy those stuff, Go to Shadigi and buy it. Or single Not here. <laughs> or go to the yeah, city. City, I mean, exactly. It, it, it's frustrating. Enough's enough. Um, I would have never thought 15 years ago that something like this, whatever, any type of business like this would open up in our community. And a message to anybody out there, um, if you know there's other places like this that are, that are selling such stuff, let me know. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll, I'll deal with it at a council level. And, and even a community level. I mean, mm -hmm. like I said, the council, we, we, there's only so much that we can do. The PC, there's only, there's only so much that we can do in regards to this specific uh, business location. To me, it's time for the communities to step up, and I'm hoping community. I, I think I'm hoping community pressure is enough to, for the owner, and, uh, to say, you know what, um, maybe this wasn't the best idea, to and to shut it down. Okay. Well, thank you for coming in today. No problem. Appreciate Anytime. your time. And um, just to be clear, Mohawk TV did uh, enter the store, the location that uh, is being discussed here today. We left our name, our number, and where to uh, contact us in case the owners of the store wanted to give a comment. We did find out that according to one of the workers that the store has been in operation for almost three years and that it was only recently that they decided to expand their business in terms of advertising, uh, more openly in the surrounding areas and also in the city. Um, we did not uh, receive a comment uh, this far as of uh, airtime. So, but if you have any questions or comments or concerns, uh, please feel free to email us at mohawktv at hotmail.com or also contact Chief Carl Horn at the Mohawk Council of Gahnawage or any of your chiefs for that matter and, uh, and uh, give your opinion. So thanks for staying with us and we'll be right back. We're going to go to a quick commercial break and come back with a story that is quite uplifting as the First Nations Technical Institute here in Gahnawage has its first ever graduation. Stay tuned. has been brought to you by Get and Go, a proud sponsor of Mohawk TV programming. And welcome back to the program. So Lance, one of the things that uh, Mohawk TV was invited to this week was the uh, Gahnawaga's Adult Regional uh, Education Center here um, had their first ever graduation class. Now, it's this really is really cool, yeah. yeah this, this is humongous. This is yeah. huge in the community. As a matter of fact, uh, getting an opportunity to see these graduates, um, you know, celebrating their success, mm -hmm. we're very happy to have been a part of that. And we want to thank Diane LaBelle for inviting Mohawk TV for yeah, that event. Yeah, she invited us on over there, and, uh, you know, they've been open since uh, July. So uh, we did uh, head over there, so take a look at that story. 
So here we are today at Maddie's Place and we are celebrating the first ever graduation of the First Nations Regional Adult Education Center here in Kahnawake. And um, it's a very special day for you and we're here with uh, Diane Labelle who is the uh, director, executive director. So uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on here today. Well, this is our first graduation ceremony for this year, for the year 2013-2014. Um, the students who are graduating today are the students who first came to us when we opened our doors in July and were part of the first group uh, to finish off their credits to earn their high school uh, diploma. And so today we are celebrating these five individuals and um, enjoying the fact that this indicates, you know, that it's a service that was needed here in the community and that it really served for these five individuals in particular. Now, uh, from what I understand, I remember we covered the grand opening several months ago. How have things been going at the centre and uh, developing? It has been a whirlwind since September. Uh, we are very, very busy. We have uh, registered more students than we thought we would register, uh, we, which leaves us with a little problem of having uh, not enough space, but, uh, you know, that's a good problem to have. The students are in the midst of uh, finishing up their first semester, so it's been two weeks of exam writing. And so all of the staff is busy prepping the students for exams. So far, I have to say that the students are doing very, very well. Um, and I'm quite pleased to see the results and the smiles on their face when they get results back that they've finally passed certain subjects. So it's absolutely wonderful. Well, congratulations on your first ever graduating class. I'm sure that it's quite the feat considering that, you know, you only opened your door several months ago and uh, also did you expect this type of, of turnout or attention? Well, I um, I'm, was very pleased that we were able to have five graduates so soon. Um, and as I look through our list at this point, I know that we're looking at a much larger graduation in June as well. Um, as students get closer to finishing the credits that they need or the programs that they're registered in. Um, so it'll be a very busy beginning of a new year uh, since uh, the registrations for Sejeb College and other trade programs um, are due by March and so we're going to be spending the first part of February really getting students registered now to go on to the next step. a bit of a success story going on here and actually this is your first ever graduation so tell me a little bit about that well I decided to go back to school this summer because I had a job but I knew that you know I need my education to get anywhere in life and so I went back to school I have four kids it was very difficult I went all summer long when my kids weren't in school so I always had to get babysitters but mm -hmm. I toughed it out and I'm glad I did because now I have my diploma what does it feel like? It's amazing because it took me so long to get it, so it's great. Yeah, and you've never had a graduation, so this is your high school diploma, I'm assuming? Yes, it is. So, oh my God, it can make me cry. <laughs> yes. Tears of joy are a good thing. Well, congratulations, you seemed overwhelmed with, with happiness. Why is that? It must be a bigger deal than you're saying then. Because I just didn't think I was going to get it, ever. <laughs> oh, that's such a great I didn't story. Want to cry. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Now you're making me cry. Um, but yeah, I understand, you know, when you work hard for something, and of course, obviously, it seems like you've struggled through some things in, in your life. And obviously, having four children and going to school is uh, an amazing feat in itself. So, congratulations. What are your plans for the future at this point? I want to go back to school and I want to become a nutritionist because I'm really, I started training with Mark and I got into really good shape and I really love it and I see how I was unhappy before when I was so overweight and I really want to help people that 
have that problem to like accomplish their goal by losing weight and feeling better about themselves and get healthy for their family and their kids and everybody because <laughs> it was such a struggle to do also and you right. know I'm very happy that I did that because I feel so much better now right. I'm so well, much happier great I mean looking at you you look fantastic too you look like you're in really great shape so obviously you know you're exude what you want to do in life so that's really important mm -hmm. um tell me what was your experience like at the regional uh, adult center and meeting Diane you said that you had struggled in French prior to this what was it like to be a student there it was actually really nice because it was close to home and like I knew the people that went to school there and the teachers were awesome and I don't know Isabel was like the best French teacher I ever had in my life I don't she like took me back to like grade one and like showed me how to do everything with the feminine and the masculine because I swear if you don't know that you don't don't even bother trying to learn French you need to go back to the basics to learn everything and that's what she did for me only in three weeks that's and amazing. I went to school for years and years at Nova and I kept failing French like all the time for three four years straight so I was like so happy I never ever thought I would pass French in three weeks but I did so or in science too <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. it's crazy so I love the teachers there they're awesome and they really know how to teach you obviously <laughs> Well, congratulations once again. Is there anything else you think is important to add? Uh, just, if you have a dream, just don't give up and keep trying because if you stop, you're never gonna get there. If uh, there are students out there who have not yet registered for Adult Ed and would like to come and see us and at least sit down and talk with us and see what we can offer, please come and see us as soon as possible. Okay, and where can uh, you be reached as a contact information, I'm sure? Yes, the, our uh, phone number is 450-635-6352, or we're on the third floor of the KOC building, um, and security knows exactly where we are, so they'll lead the way. Okay. Well, thank you for your time, and once again, congratulations on your first uh, graduating class. Thank you very much. Congratulations going out to all those graduates. It was a really good event. I mean, um, thank you to Diane LaBelle who invited Mohan TV along to do some filming and also they had a nice dinner and a ceremony for their uh, graduates as you just saw. Mm -hmm. And um, it was really nice to be part of uh, that type of ceremony. So congratulations to them and good luck with everything in the future. Speaking of good luck to people, uh, one of the big traditions that's happened here at Mohawk TV, uh, choosing the Gunnawagan most fascinating people. Uh, we've done that for the past four years, then we're going to the fifth year for yeah. 2013. Yes. Here's the thing. Over 30 to 35 people were submitted for being the most fascinating people. And of 2013. <laughs> quite a list, an yeah. extensive list. And yeah. The only thing I'm really upset about about this list is that I was not nominated. No. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> done, no, like, I'm just kidding. I was like... <laughs> like, as if. No, but really, the, the uniqueness about this list, which I, I thought was, was interesting, these are real movers and shakers within the community. People yeah. really... Uh, making it count uh, for doing things right here in Gunawaga. And I, you, you have to admire that. So yeah, the, the people were able to nominate um, up until the end of November. <clears throat> and uh, we've been going through the list for the last two weeks now. I know I have been, excuse me, and just um, putting everything into categories and looking at, uh, you know, some of the nominations that came in for the most fascinating people of 2013. Some people really wrote extensive nomination letters as to why they felt this person was fascinating. Right. Um, so the competition is really stiff. And I think that, you know, the group of people that were going to be asking to overlook the nominations and make the final 10, the final 10 selection, uh, once we notify everybody that they've been selected and uh, we will be asking for photos and things like that, we'd also like to... Um, include uh, those who wrote in uh, and nominated certain individuals and the reasons why and things like that. And then uh, we will be releasing it by uh, the December 18th show, I believe. <laughs> so next week. Next week. Yeah, it's only, it's very close. Yeah. And then, you know, we're going to be off on a small hiatus for the holidays. That's right. Um, but every year it seems that we get more 
and more uh, nominations. But for whatever reason, this year it's been the most successful. And also, it's our fifth anniversary right. for Kahnawake's most fascinating people. Um, I don't know if we've done it consecutively. I know that in the last two years we've done it consecutively, but I think we had we had done it and then we didn't. I know one year we did it with K103 um, when Kristen Jerome was still, oh yeah, you know, was there. Good so that's how Kristen. that's kind of you know how far back we go. Um, so again. It's uh, our fifth year of nomination. So uh, really looking forward to uh, revealing the final countdown. <laughs> this is going to be good. <laughs> Where is that from? Uh, that's that's is, Europe. Is that Europe? Okay, I was yeah, going to say final. Journey. No. <laughs> One of those bands. It's Close. Yeah. It's cool. It was 80s. <laughs> I can tell you this, though. Uh, we, we thank you so much for the submissions. Yep. And uh, can't wait to let uh, the, the old cat out of the bag. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be happening. But a big holiday show next week. Looking yep. forward to that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to that. And of course, you know, we um, can't always get everything on the show. There's a lot going on in Gunawage and we try to keep you up to date as much as possible. But if you're looking for up to the minute, uh, daily updates are given on our website, which That's is right. www.gahnawage411.com. You can find all the latest news, current events, uh, press releases from all the organizations, PSAs. And if you have something that you'd like to submit at a community, as a community member, maybe you have a special event coming up or something that you feel could be promoted, you can always email us at mohawktv at hotmail.com, excuse me, or production at um, gunawage411.com. So by all means, please send in your stuff and maybe you can even next year be the most interesting, interesting person <laughs> of 2014 based off your story, you never know. You never know. So, yeah. um, so that's it for this week. Thanks for staying with us. And uh, as always, we enjoy keeping you up to date here in Gatnawage. And if you have any comments or questions uh, for Lance or I, just uh, feel free to contact us here at TV at hotmail.ca again, or no, hotmail.com. Dot com. At hotmail.com. Or give us a call on our news line at 450-632-9449. Thank you Lance. so much, Regan. <laughs> thank you so much to you there, Gatnawage, from all of us here at Mohawk TV. We thank you so much and uh, we will talk to you guys next week. On a good way. On a... Que haga tadia de raste, cayerniga hiado, ze wadaroro. This program has been brought to you by Get and Go, a proud sponsor of Mohawk TV programming.